Buddy, my name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. And we know that your time is very valuable, and we thank you guys very much for joining us, and we appreciate you guys listening, and everybody that is out there, we are extending our family table to all of you guys, and we know that your time is very valuable. And we had a lady comment on there and said we were too silly in our last one, and I guess I'd like to let everybody know, I guess first and foremost, is that... <clears throat> this house is with 10 pit bulls and the kind of stress and the kind of craziness that we have in this house that silliness is actually is real rare it's usually sternness it's usually on edgedness it's usually not a great time a lot of times and so we are we are a very high performance and um you know we live out in the middle of a jungle and there's a lot of things that could actually end up killing us every single day and so it is it is actually stressful it's not like uh, living in the city or living in the north america you get up every morning and you know that you'll go to bed every night um <clears throat> we can be bitten by snakes and uh, caterpillars that kill you there's a tremendous amount of things that can go wrong in this house and so we are on edge quite a bit and so i i appreciate her comment that said we we're silly but as a family we should actually be enjoying the word of yah we should be able to laugh and joke and and you know our creator doesn't want people sitting there um cra crazy and sad and, and upset and everything so i guess if you guys believe this is silly i am super super sorry um it is not silly to us it is very important to us and that is why we are spending our time doing this with you guys and um figuring out what the laws statutes and commands of our creator are so hopefully you guys can relax out there and have a little bit of a good time with us um while we are able to have good times and a lot of you guys i mean you can listen to the other episodes that we have and you can you can tell when there's a lot of stress a lot of issues you know we're not as bubbly as we are on some days today we're actually recording this on a sabbath day um so that we have it for tomorrow because we never know in rainy season if we'll actually have a day without rain and the rain is almost unbearable you can't even hear anything and it's, we can't we feel like we're screaming and uh, it just doesn't feel like it's a real good lesson and so we tried to record these when we can and so on a Shabbat, we actually have a little more time to to chill and to hang out and to, I guess, I don't want to say be silly, but be freer than we are on a, a, an average day. So with that, gentlemen, how the heck are you guys doing? Good. Good. Went over Good. that today. Today is still the same day, but I hope you guys are doing well. And we ended up with two commands, which let me scroll to the bottom of this, that I didn't, I kind of, I guess it took me off guard um, a little bit um, because I I didn't know honestly about this so we ended the other day and we've been on uh this is a making noise sorry <clears throat> the, we ended on command 49 we've been on command 49 for like the last four or five chapters and then we had one in exodus 30 um and these are the ones that kind of took me off guard because I, I didn't i didn't know there's like a command i did know that there was you shouldn't um, mix this stuff. I remember this from back in the days when I was reading this. I'm like, oh, that's really weird. But when you write it down, it becomes something totally different. So let's go over the two commands here that we got last time. Commandment 50, do not make or use on a normal person. Um, and, and what that means is this stuff right here. Um, principal spices of pure myrrh, uh, sweet cinnamon, uh, let's see, sweet calamus, uh, cassia, Cassia. So basically, whatever these ingredients are mixed in this proportion, we are not supposed to ever use on a person. Um, and then we ended up with this here, and do not use, do not make or use on a normal person, right? And so this is um, like Yaw's uh, special perfume or something of the sort. Uh, I don't know exactly why he wouldn't want us to do this, but he has his ways, and his ways are always right. Um, just like when you, you're not supposed to mix wool and, and linen together, it, it creates a frequency that will harm you as a human. So we wouldn't know this stuff, but this is what Yah likes. And so this command, 51, um, is talking about sweet spices, stacta, anca, galbanum. Um, these sweet spices, pure frankincense, right? And so 
you're not supposed to take these in the, and we have another reference to this down there and we might put a different version in there. That, we, that is the Okay, version. that's a different version right there. Okay. Yeah, so then the Lord said to Moses to take fruit, sweet spices, stacta, I don't know, stacia maybe, um, onica and galbanium, sweet spices with pure frankincense in equal amount, right? We wouldn't do this because Yah says do not make this. Um, so that's where we are at. All right, gentlemen, let's get into this and let's continue on. First of all, let's go this, pop this in, and hopefully it doesn't let us down. And then we will go here, and it looks like we're all good. So we are Exodus 30? 31. 31. Okay, so let's head over here, both of these. Okay, so Exodus 31, and Eli, we got this. Here we go. And much love to everybody. Thank you again for spending some time with us and for spending the time with the word of Yah. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, See, I have called by name Bethsel, the son of Uri, the son of Kori, and the tribe of Yahuda. And I have filled him with the Ruach Elohim. In, what did you guys say? Ruach of Elohim. Ruach of Elohim, spirit of Elohim. And I have filled him with the Ruach of Elohim in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. To devise cunning works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass. Mine says to make designs for work in gold and silver and bronze. Okay. And in cutting of stones, to set them. And in carving of timber, to work in all manner of workmanship. And I, behold, I have given with him... I don't even know what this word is. Aholiov. Aholiov. I've given him with Aholiov, the son of Akiamak. Of the tribe of Dan, and in the hearts of all that are wise-hearted, I have put wisdom, that they may make all that I have commanded you. The tabernacle of assembly, and the ark of the testimony, and the mercy seat that is thereon, thereupon, and all the furniture of the tabernacle. And the table, and his furniture, and the pure menorah with all his furniture, and the altar of incense. And the altar of the ascending smoke offering with all his furniture, and the laver and his foot. And the laver was the, the basin. The basin. And the cloths of service and the holy garments of Aaron the priest and the garments of his sons to minister in the priest's office. And the anointing oil and sweet incense for the holy place, according to all that I have commanded you, shall they do. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael, saying, Truly, my Shabbats ye shall guard, for it is a sign between you, me and you Throughout your generations, that we may know that I am Yahuwah Mekodishikem. I don't even know how to say that right. Let's try that. Oh, I didn't have a... Uh, Up in the NIV it says, who makes you holy. Makes you holy. So, holy, like, Mekodishikem. Okay, so, I, this is a... Um, it, we're, we're running into a command, right? But this is going to be a sub-command. Mm -hmm. And so we need to add this into the subcommand. So 30, Exodus 31 will be a, a commandment under um, the commandment of keeping the Shabbat that we already have. Ye shall guard the Shabbat, be therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defiles it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever does any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. I'm going back up real quick to 13. Um, it says throughout your generations... Um, those people all came and they went. Does that mean the Shabbat is gone? No, no all generations. Uh, it says throughout your generations. I we mean, are technically, still the generations. We could still technically be the generation of the Israelites. Yep, that's true. All right, and uh, fifteen. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Shabbat of rest, holy to Yahuwah. Whosoever does any work in the Shabbat, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore, the children of Yashrael shall guard the Shabbat to do the Shabbat throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Yashrael forever. For in six days, Yahuwah made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And he gave unto Moshe, when he had made an end of communion with him upon Mount Sinai, two sapphires of testimony, sapphire stones written with the finger of Elohim. All right, so this is a real this is a real short. Um, I guess we're going to make it out of this without uh, a lot of time. But I guess even though it is short, I would have to say that is it's very important. We just ended up with um, one, two, three, four, five, six verses that all talks about Shabbat. And the if you ruin it, if you screw this up, 
you're to die, right? If you're, it, it says you should die. There's a couple of points in here. We should be put to yeah, death. If you do any work on it, you will die. So, I mean, that, that, is, that is crazy. What happens, though, what happens, though, if you have to do work? What happens if your cow falls? If your mm-hmm. oxen falls in a ditch, you, you have to go save it. it. What happens if your neighbor comes over and needs absolute help? Like, there, there's something going on. Uh, it is better to do good on the Shabbat than Pharisees are doing. Says who? That's what Yehoshua said, our Messiah. Right, and when did he say this? He said when, uh, when he, healed he healed the man's hand in the, t- in the uh, synagogue, the Pharisees came to him and said, Why are you working on the Shabbat day? Don't you know that it's wrong to work on the Shabbat day? And he goes, What is better to do, evil on the Shabbat or to do good? And they said, Well, it's better to do good on the Shabbat. He goes, Therefore, I've done good by helping this man and heal his hand. But what about our Messiah? Everybody says that Jesus is our Sabbath. You guys yeah, remember I, that? It literally makes and, zero sense. That is like uh, you can the keep most... Sabbath any day you want because Jesus is our Sabbath. Is what I've heard hundreds of times. Yeah, According to y'all, he has his set dates, right? Throughout the entire Bible, he's always had his set dates on everything. He's never once said, "All right, I'll be, uh, I'll be the day you choose to celebrate Passover." Or people every day, every single year, they celebrate their own birthday, right? If why don't you just say? Uh, my dad is my birthday. I will celebrate my birthday whenever I want. It doesn't make sense. You have your set date, and so does Yah. He has his set days of what he wants. And if you were to say Jesus is my Sabbath, you're basically defiling everything he said. You're defying, you're basically just obeying him just because it's more comfortable for you. Yeah, and he, again, it always comes to 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto Yah, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And when we rightly divide the word of truth, we cannot trump pieces of the Bible. You cannot take a something out of the letters of Brother Shaul, Paul, Paul all, and have him, um, you know, uh, you can't trump this, right? I mean, so many people have freed themselves from the law because they believe that the, the what their pastors told them about the letters of, of Brother Paul, and it's, uh, it's bad. It's an abomination, and if we are not keeping Sabbath, and back in the day, if you were working on the Sabbath, you were pulled outside and died now do you think this was like um i mean where 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 do we draw the lines right um what happens if you have a piece of paper on the ground in your kitchen as you walk by you drop something do you pick up that piece of paper um i mean what does this piece of paper have on i mean if this piece of paper is like something that needs to like if it's like you're working with a piece of paper well you just you you, walk, you walked over to you walked to the fridge you opened the fridge and a piece of paper flew out of the fridge hit the ground do you pick this up i would say yeah pick it up uh, yeah, these are these are tricky que- These are tricky I mean, questions. I, huh? It's not like you're going to like start a fire and pick up sticks. You're just picking the paper and put it back where it was. So this is where we would have to. We would want to study to show ourselves approved, right? And we have a we have past things where we know that the guy that was picking up sticks, right? He got he got smoted, and but so that was probably so he could go kindle fire. Yeah, so he could he could do his work, and we also know that people went out on Shabbat for food and their food there was nothing to be found and so um yeah yeah um i don't i don't know these are the questions these are trick questions i do not know um it's like the question i asked you guys the other day i can't remember what it was but we did not know the answer to oh, it it was if uh, blood transfusions blood, trans- blood transfusions yeah and there's a couple of our brothers and sisters out there that were talking about that and one one of our sisters is talking about maybe it would be okay if you're sharing a life or saving a life while another sister was talking about her sister where she was in she basically started taking blood transfusions years ago and now that's all she is is she is she's doing blood transfusions and it's it's um i don't again i don't have the answers to a lot of this stuff where does it have a technicality i believe that the way the jews do this is in, improper they have like a thousand commands for shabbat to where they even would would hire a a gentile to flip their lights on and do things of that nature and I don't believe that that is what rest is about. I do not believe that. And I would say if a piece of paper fell out of your fridge, I would say if it's something you would pick it up, right? I mean, I, I you're not you're not starting a project. You're not, you know, going under your your stuff. I'm just, I'm just giving us tricky questions to kind of go over to try to figure this stuff out. And I, and I don't have the answers to it. Um, some people are like, absolutely not. The Jews would not pick up a piece of paper on the ground. But, I mean, if you are, um, you know, we, we're trying to follow the law, statutes, and commands to the absolute best ability that we have. And there's nothing more important than pleasing our creator. Okay. Um, so, I guess with that, that is going to end a kind of a short segment here. Um, gentlemen, uh, 
Anything else to add? Um, I want to go back to something you said where you said people have freed themselves from the Torah, and it's not that people have freed themselves from it, but they have decided that they are going to change the way they uh, want to believe, right? They choose for themselves. They don't free themselves from the Torah, but rather they enslave themselves unto death. They ens- when they, when Absolutely. they go from yeah. the Torah, it's like if they're not doing any better for themselves by saying they don't want to follow law anymore and they're going to go live how they want because Jesus died on the cross for them and that's that's it. They're done. They're uh, they're doing harm to themselves in the future because like we say in every... When we do our youth for Yah, every action has its consequence, whether now or 100 years from now, whether in the next life there's going to be a consequence or whether good or bad that you do. Yeah, and if you're choosing, that, that was beautiful. If you're choosing to free yourself from law, you're not really freezing anything, right? You're, you're bonding yourself into, into the depths of Shoal, where, you know, it, it does talk in, in um, other books, some of the extracurricular book, about when you die, the people that die in in our Messiah, the people that are following the law, statutes, and commands, it appears that you go into a sleep, right? And you are awoken at the last trump when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. Um, but the people that have rejected the Torah, that have rejected the Messiah, that have um, not, you know, rejected his laws, you reject the creator by rejecting his laws. You, you would put his laws on the cross and say they don't apply to you. And then you'll get super sick by eating a, a, a piece of bacon or something you haven't cooked right. And, you know, it's an abominable food. But yet the bacon and pig is, is one of the greatest traps the Christians will ever have that they will ever fall into because they refuse to give up their pork because they, it makes them very angry. It makes them so angry. There's, and I, there's turkey bacon. It's turkey, not pig. Yeah, there's turkey bacon, and it's not it's not the same thing, right? It does not. We, it's been, I don't know how many years, seven Years since we've had pork, I, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, um, maybe eight. I, I don't remember. But um, I rem- nine almost nine years. And so I remember, and you guys will probably remember it less, but I, I mean, I grew up with BLT sandwiches. I grew up with abominable foods and, and things of that nature. And you can give it up. It's, it's uh, I guess it's cheaper than beef, I guess is what they say. And that's how the USA always labeled it. It was like the, the cheap white meat or something or the... The next thing, I mean, they're not, and that's the thing is, is all of the producers of pigs, they make their money selling you pig. And, um, you know, it's, it's easy to raise pigs. Pigs are, are super easy and they have a ton of little piglets and they all grow up to be big old fat, nasty things. And, you know, they're, um, it's abominable. So, and if, and if you look throughout the entire Bible, right, no Yisraelite had a pig farmer. There were no groups of pigs in the Yisraelite camps, right? How do we know that? There was never a pig in there. They had pigs in the Gentile lands. You had all the pigs in the Gentile lands. That's why pigs were unclean. So would it be bad to have a herd of pigs? I don't think the animals Maybe it's like an eating think, animal, I yes. think having a, like, because they were like waste, like waste bins, right? They'd go around eating all the trash, keep the land if, clean. If you wanted, and I've seen videos coming out of a um, long, long time ago, where in, in Las Vegas, Las Vegas is like the city of evil. Of It's actually every place in Babylon now is the city of evil. But they used to, they have, and you guys wouldn't know this, but when you go to Vegas, there's like buffet lines. Mm-hmm. And for those who don't know what a buffet is, in the States, North America, it's like a, it's all you can eat, right? They have trays and trays and trays and plates of food and it never stops. But they make that food every single day and they had to dump it out to the pigs. And so there's pigs outside of Las Vegas and they would consume everything. Like they would just take all the huge truckloads of excess food and it makes North Americans look really, really bad when you're dumping out like all this beautiful steaks and all this stuff to the pigs because where else are you going to do it? But but that's what they do is they're consumers. So I would see that there would be a place for pigs if you needed to get rid of trash and and stuff of that nature right you're not going to be there's no other animals that's going to consume that kind of food out of las vegas like a pig right they're just that's that's they're going to nail it maybe it's a pack of dogs and things but it's not going to be the same as the pigs 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 are like they can just eat they can eat and they don't get hurt right they can completely eat they live with the kind of worms and the kind of bacteria in them that would um annihilate a human and everyone's like, oh, you just got to cook it right or you didn't cook it right. Or, you know, you don't cook it at all, right? You're not supposed to be eating that stuff. So we either choose the will of our creator. And, oh, and where I was going with that whole thing, the, 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 we choose the will of our creator or we don't. But when we die, according to the, the book, right, the, the, if, you're, if you're in the will of Yah, you sleep. And if you're not, you immediately end up in a place where you are 100% guilt ridden. 
you understand that you have rejected your creator and you're sitting there in terror until judgment. And when judgment comes, there's nothing you can do, right? So we have literally one chance at saving our soul. The only, the most important thing we have to protect in our entire lives is our souls as individuals. And we cannot, and just like myself, I cannot, I cannot pay your way into the Shimaim. I cannot pay your way into the kingdom. Everything is your guys' choice, just like it's all of you guys out there. We choose what we want to do. And at the end of the day, we can either choose against the will of Yah or we can go with him. And there's no reason not to not to go with him. Right? He uh our dog's over there sleeping, if you guys can hear. She's dreaming. Um so she's making squeaking sounds. Uh so that's that's basically it. Anyone have any kind of uh Eli, you're you're not saying anything. What do you got here? Um, mm. follow the Torah. <laughs> follow the Torah. Um, I want to say one more thing is that remember when Yeshua told the uh, it was not Lazarus but the rich man and he's like let me go back and at least tell all my family to uh, listen and he goes they had Moses and they had the Torah and they still the prophets and they still not listen uh, don't be like that person uh, if you're hearing this today this is uh, for Yah he obviously sent you here for a reason that you need to uh, change your life around you need to open your Bible and understand that the Torah is good. And if you are living in a life of sin, it's time to turn around so you do not end up asking Abraham for a dip of water because it's so hot, right? This is uh, your chance to listen to Moses and listen to the Torah. Yeah, and, and even the, I go for even further on that. Good job, Kate. Um, is that the, the, rich, the rich man, you know, when we're talking about shoal and death, is that's what he said. He says, I, even if I could, there's a chasm between me and you. They can't see you. You can't get to them. But in your life, you had the good things, but Lazarus had the bad things. And now you're having the bad things. And it's not, you know, we get wrapped up into 80 years of life or whatever, whatever our years are, right? Especially as kids, as youth, one day means absolutely everything. Uh, you, you take away something from these, my kids for like one day and it drives them insane. They think it's the end of time and they don't understand that it's just, a, it's, it's, it's so fast. And the older that you get, the faster life goes and it's over in a blink, but that's not eternity, right? This is our creator knows no limits with time. We don't know what his, when, when our creator was ever created. We don't know if he was created. We don't know anything about this, but we do know that, that one day is a, is a thousand years to him, which is, is, you know, imagine that, right? He's not even going through a single day. You're not even going through a 10th of his day when, when we have a life like this. And so our, hope and our eternity is after this life right we are going to get to that point we are going to get um we are going to end this life very soon all of us it's it's just a matter of time how we end up wherever we end up but we need to protect the most important thing which is our soul and unless we are keeping in obedience to our creator we are not in control of the soul and so you will end up with feelings of guilt you will end up with feeling all sorts of horrible things in this life and the feelings of guilt are probably trying to get you on the right path and you won't have guilt there is a freedom in the torah and that freedom that paul's always talking about is that it's not you're not free from the torah you're free from the guilt of living outside of the torah because those in the torah and those who have the 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 faith of messiah yahushua we don't care when we die. It doesn't matter. This earth is going to pass away. These devils are going to take over this world. They're going to they're going to do everything they're going to do, right? But it doesn't matter to us because it's just a small part of our life. And regardless of what your life is or how dark it is or what it is, we must make it through to the other side because just like Lazarus, our best world is coming soon. This will not be our best world. This is our our the devils and demons have this world. So, that's it. Anyone? Jake? You got anything? Yeah. Eli, you got anything? No. All right, everybody. Your Bibles. You read Shalom. your Bibles. Yep. Shalom. Much love, everybody. Shalom. Shalom.